Doctor! Want me to break your neck? Now, I'm also packing your Vanya costume just in case I'm your Othello, the one with the darling earring. No, I'm not doing Vanya or Othello, or Caesar, or Richard, or Puck. Just pack what I told you to pack. Not even Hamlet. Your unforgettable Hamlet. Hamlet? I haven't done Hamlet in eight, ten years. Eighteen, twenty, but why quibble over a decade? Time to consider Polonius. Well, oh, I bet he was a fine Hamlet. I read all your good notices in your scrapbook. He throws away all the lousy ones. But I save every single one. What the hell is this? This go with the trunk downstairs. I told you the wardrobe I want. Why does she do this to me when I play out of town? An actor should be relaxed. She's got me all jumpy and tense. Mama, stop it. You're making me tense, too. Can we drop this Mama Balderdash? Mama this, Mama that. She's the damn housekeeper and not your mama, thank God. Oh, let her have her mama. She's just a symbolic figure, Max. You know, in some Mexican homes, they have little symbolic statues of quintessential ugliness. <laughs> People spit and vent their scorn on them, then feeling purged, carry on good naturedly. I spit on you. I'll wait downstairs until oh. the Queen of Versailles here is gone. Or the cab arrives, whichever comes first. So, you're only playing three nights in Schlag? Then you'll what? be home by Monday. Disappointed. Should I stay away longer? Just asking, darling. What's wrong with you? Not a damn thing, darling. I'm just trying to accommodate you. You haven't accommodated me in months, darling. Good God, if your public could hear it's two darlings talking to each other like that. And I talk to him beautifully on stage if the part calls for it. And treats me like a leper in real life. I suppose nothing lasts forever, not even love. We probably won't last till our eighth anniversary in August. Ninth. It's already May. Oh, beautiful May. Beautiful spring. Beautiful May. Elena, are you crying? Elena. Again! <laughs> My wife has been getting a steady parade of roses lately, Heinrich. Here, give me the card. I'll read it. I'm your husband. We shouldn't keep secrets. No, I don't like your attitude. The fan who sent me these appreciates me. Unlike some around here. Well, that was beautifully mishandled. Oh. You know she'd rather get another wrinkle in her forehead than tell you who sent them. Why not just ask the florist? I know who sent them. You know? Well, who? I'm surprised I can breathe. One moment I want to strangle her like Othello, next moment I want to make love to her like Antony. I suggest the latter, fewer complications. My chest <laughs> pounds, my hands shake. I love her so much, Heinrich, I can't imagine being without her. Neither can I, you two were meant for each other. Like Romeo and Juliet, Antony and Cleopatra, Tristan and Isolde. They all committed suicide. <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. Your life is a melodrama, not a tragedy. Oh, fine. My life's not worth much. I even looked at Vienna in a way I've never looked at it before. Buildings I might jump off. So many possibilities. We're rich in our cultural heritage, Heinrich. Max, you need to calm down. Maybe I just need to shoot myself. If it'll calm you down. I swear I will haunt her forever from my grave. You need to put these thoughts right out of your mind. You said you know who sent those flowers. Who? Look, we both know how Elena used to be. Two failed marriages, three broken engagements. And how many lovers did she have? Because the one she always wanted was never available. The oldest living bachelor in Vienna, then the oldest newlywed. You were frightened of her, still are after almost nine years of marriage. How many lovers did she have? Kemp, Reinhofer, Ziegler. Excluding marriages, but counting engagements, there were nine. Excuse me, 
There were only seven. I was eight. Excuse me, there were nine. You can't forget Bingman and Nimichek. Nimichek, Balderdez just gossip. Yes, Bingman was crazy about her, but she couldn't stand to be sweated all the time. Fine, we'll say seven for certain, one Balderdash and one she couldn't stand. That's nine total. <laughs> you were ten. But it's old history. History can repeat itself. A seed may lie dormant for years and suddenly sprout, and her seed has sprouted. She's on fire again. Marriage means nothing. I can hear his footsteps coming. Tis. Oh, the eleventh man. Beg pardon, sir. Have to water, uh, sir. Uh, uh, Never mind. Be back later. I overheard her when she was tipsy one night talking to Mama. You know how Elena gets when she's tipsy, how she loves to talk? About the man she was yearning for, a soldier. Oh. <laughs> no, not just any soldier, Heinrich, an extraordinary one, a glorious military man of exceptional quality and highest rank. Oh, your wife is not having any yearnings for a soldier. Oh. I would know that, believe me. And where in the world would she find such a deity? What about one of those enigmatic guardsmen attached to the Russian embassy just up the street at Engelplatz? Oh my god, they're adorable. She's met a soldier like that. And does he have a friend? She hasn't met him yet. Not yet? What? You've lost me. You were talking about... What are you talking about? I'm talking about the guardsman she's planning to meet. But hasn't met yet? The one who sent all those flowers? Well, what about him? You're looking at him! Well, I sent those roses. I'm the guardsman. I need a drink. <laughs> Am I a good actor or not? You are also her husband. Women recognize their husbands. I am also Max Schumann, for God's sake. I'll be unrecognizable. I don't just play a part. I become the part. <laughs> Russian, I learned it for the part. <laughs> I need a drink. Besides, she's practically blind without her glasses. This will be the ultimate challenge. It's the ultimate insanity. Normal men who are jealous shoot their wives. Or their wife's lover. Shoot somebody. Perhaps you should shoot yourself. That's understandable. I don't understand what you expect to accomplish with this. I've yet to test her, to woo her as the guardsman, mesmerize her as the guardsman, steal her heart as the guardsman, <laughs> and pray she rejects me. <laughs> I mean him. Uh, 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 oh, 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 go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. I laughed at myself until my actor's brain began to work. Ah, actor's brain. <laughs> For weeks I walked up and down the street, below that window, dressed in this, but she was never there until one day she looked down at me, stared at me, but didn't smile. I saluted just nonchalantly. She pulled the curtain shut. I was euphoric. Good, good. <laughs> then, then there's no need to continue with the city show. Next time the guardsman passed below that window, she intentionally flirted! A little smile, a touch in the cheek. Well, flirtation is a national pastime. That doesn't mean a damn thing. That day I sent her flowers and been sending them every day for ten weeks with a card. From Prince Nikolai Stanislavich Samsonov. Prince? Oh, well, why not? It's a part. May as well make it a good one. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> I didn't realize. Uh, <laughs> oh. oh. I don't know. It's, it's all right. Max. <laughs> it's all right. My mother loved your Hamlet. <laughs> oh, cigarette? Oh, you still smoke those things. Oh, they taste like dried goat manure. You're a theater critic, not a tobacco critic. One day. She received a letter saying the prince was a devoted admirer of her great talent and asking if she had any objection to meeting him. 
Here's her reply. No objection. Damn her! My plan fell into place. I wired Schlott Theater that I was available for three performances. Overjoyed, they announced it everywhere. Then the prince sent this. She's hiding it right there. <laughs> Madam, I read that your husband will Heinrich, be- Heinrich, please, leave the accents to me. <laughs> we'll be playing out of town. Please don't misconstrue my intentions if I request the supreme honor of calling upon you. If you agree, please signal me by coming to the window at exactly six o'clock tomorrow. Oh, that's today. It's almost six. What fun. Pull back the curtain and touch your pear. Hair! <laughs> touch your hair! <laughs> I will be watching with binoculars from my embassy window, and shortly I will present myself at your residence with all humility and respect to some sort. So, Max, uh, harmless flirtation at the window is not a Women are romantics, but... A signal oh. at the window <laughs> for a clandestine tryst. It's not going to happen, I promise you. No. Six o'clock. It's six o'clock, you'll miss your train. Oh, I won't. It's not quite six yet. Oh, any moment, darling. That clock's always fast, dear. Oh, I'm just afraid you'll be late, Angel. Is that what you're afraid of, sweetheart? <laughs> what else, precious? Oh, I'm surprised you're still here. You always like to be early. I thought you'd be halfway to the station by now. I'm glad I can still surprise you. <laughs> Did you know that clock is six minutes fast? I fixed it. See, I can still surprise you too. It's exactly six. It's exactly six. She fixed it. <laughs> Still here? Uh, it's past six, Max. Did you get something? Uh -huh. Oh, Max, I'm sorry we fought. It's my fault. I'm too sensitive. No, no, my fault. I'm too insensitive. The goddamn cab is waiting downstairs. God keep you, sir. <laughs> you deserve better. <laughs> Don't forget me. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Allergies. Dust. Dust. You're a maid. <gasps> I didn't know she was allergic to dust. Ah, she's allergic to work. Oh, bring in that gown I laid out. Oh, and I'll find another even more gorgeous. Well, I'm honored. But you needn't tidy up for my sake. I know how messy you really are. Well, I dropped by to keep you company. But it appears that Heather Duster is better company than I am. What are you jabbering on about? Uh, about my uselessness here about whether I should go or stay. <laughs> Perhaps I should go. Aww. On the other hand, <laughs> I've been useless here for years. I'll stay. In Leicester, expecting someone special. Oh, you are special, <laughs> Heinrich, but actually, today may not be the best day for a visit. Oh, it appears someone is visiting. You're nervous. Your eyes are shiny. Your voice a bit unsteady. You wouldn't be keeping a naughty secret from me, would you, Elena? Oh, you old lush. You please go and don't ask questions, Ricky. Oh, good lord. You are trying to get rid of me. Whenever Heinrich becomes Ricky, and I'm finished. Good night. Why not just tell me like a good girl? I am not a good girl, and there is nothing to tell. A friend's paying a visit, no one you were acquainted with. Was Max acting peculiar, or am I imagining it? Um. <clears throat> was he acting peculiar? 
peculiar? Two actors under one roof, peculiarity is omnipresent. The curtain never goes down around here. <laughs> so, a new friend is coming. Tell me about him. I never said anything about a him. Good night. Oh, don't you know when a lady embraces a man, it's time for him to leave? Ah. Get his hat and cane out. Those rules don't apply to me. Not now, Bertha. I'm Do not ready. Do as I told you, Bertha. He'll be ready. <laughs> oh, it's very lovely. But I prefer this one. It's so bewitching. Well, oh. then, a witch should wear it. We'll <laughs> give it to Mama. She can wear it to one of the bovine judging contests at the Grunstadt Fair. Perhaps she'll even win a gold ribbon herself. This is you. She can do bleak with a touch of mystique. <laughs> I'm not sure what it means, but I love the rhyme. <laughs> give the Duchess her hat and cane, Bertha. So, are you going to the opera tonight, Elena? I don't know when I'll be free. But you've reserved your box, of course, with that beautiful ante room. You know, if you don't like the performance, you can nap in the ante room and wake up in time for the champagne reception backstage afterwards. That's what I do. <laughs> may I join you tonight? If it's too late, I may not go. Uh, I probably won't go. No, I'm not going. Please, I've got to get dressed. Good night, Ricky. Stop with that, Ricky. And stop being so dramatic. It's easy to get rid of a caller if you want to get rid of him. Not that easy. <laughs> oh, no, you. You're a charmer. <laughs> Tis pity we didn't meet 20 years earlier. It would have been a storybook romance. I don't read those kind of books. Your hat. I'm astonished. You could actually read. <laughs> knock, knock. You sure you don't have anything to tell your best friend? Yes, I do. Good night. Now, Elena, we have never kept secrets from one another. Ah, you have more secrets than Houdini. Oh, my God. Talk about bewitching. That man, what a magical physique. Oh. I know I could put him in a hold he'd never get out of. Ah! <laughs> Enough of that. Where were we? We were on our fourth. Nice. Now, Elena, I'm hurt that you're not confiding in me. Won't you just give me a hint? Good night, that's fine. All right, all right. I won't ask again. I'm through, I'm finished, and I'm leaving. But I'll find out anyway. It's probably an old flame, like Bingman or Nemechek. Mm. Or maybe... Good night! Now I'm ready. Now I'm ready. <laughs> oh, sorry. My rheumatism won't allow me to pick it up.
What? Number what? Oh, you've been snooping again. No, not on purpose. <laughs> and she has such a nice husband, too. Nice eyes, nice face, nice derriere. No. Oh, shut up. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself, a young girl like you. Infatuated with a dinosaur. <laughs> oh, don't think I couldn't hear you. Stop saying I'm in love. I'm not in love. I'm in tree. That's all. In tree. Oh! oh! It's a disaster. <laughs> Atrocious. I look like a hag. I'm not seeing anyone. Oh, you look positively gorgeous. Oh. It's not that bad. Maybe if I stand like this. There's a certain charm, grace, chic, even radiance, a, a glamour. Oh, it's exquisite, Mama. Oh, I like looking beautiful. Do you think Max ever noticed Ah, uh, he wouldn't notice if you grew a second head. <laughs> he doesn't even notice this affair going on under his nose. He did love me once, Mama, he did. Oh, I just don't know anymore. For me to exist, I have to be noticed. If he can't do the job, someone else will. Remember in the old days how I used to take you to the opera with me? Well, I am taking you tonight. <laughs> if I go. Oh, God bless this new man. You're alive again. <laughs> There's a strange man in, in a uniform and a sword to steal. <laughs> Calm down and show him in. Oh, wait. I'll take this away. In one minute. Two minutes. Stanislavich, some son of, of his majesty's imperial guard. Enchanté, madame. In Russia, we say, ochin priyatno. Ochin priyatno, such a beautiful language. Oh, the pleasure is overwhelmingly mine. Oh, are you one of the Romanov branch? Oh, friends? I am more accurately a twig on the branch and humbly just a leaf on the twig. Oh, that's so enchanting. How modestly you put that. I was somewhat afraid to meet the great actress whom I've admired from afar. Afraid? A Cossack. I'm confident you'll regain your courage. I only hope in person I won't disappoint you. Without theatrical makeup and lighting, it's, it's difficult to live up to one's <laughs> stage image. <laughs> Quite the contrary. Your beauty is enhanced in person. Enhanced? <laughs> Ah. That's quite Russian, isn't it? Ah. <laughs> uh, how many lumps? One. One? One. You only take one lump of sugar with your tea? To my mind, it is unmasculine to have an obsession with the sweets. <laughs> my husband takes four. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he need any sugar? Being your husband is sweet enough. <laughs> However, I confess, I don't take husbands too seriously, not for that matter, marriage itself. Oh, how typical of, of your class. We on the lower rung of society 
often find great joy in marriage. Great joy? Forgive me. I apologize if I offend you in any way. Oh, I forgive you. Oh. <laughs> I am mournful that I will not be meeting today your uh, talented and uh, handsome husband. Handsome? You think he's handsome? I, I have no opinion on that matter. I have heard many women say such things. <laughs> yes, I, I suppose so, in a certain way. But I appreciate a man's mind, his intelligence much more. You don't usually find intelligence in actors. <laughs> <laughs> ah, intelligence, yes. Your husband is intelligent. Yes, he is, yes. Yes, highly intelligent. Mm, I wouldn't go that far. He's an actor. He knows how to act highly intelligent. That's why he makes such a good Sherlock Holmes. Oh, but think for a moment. Would a highly intelligent man put makeup on his face, wigs on his head, mustaches over his lip, and recite lines in various accents, <laughs> pretending to be someone he isn't? Would a highly intelligent man do that? Would you? Uh, no! I am adjutant to His Majesty the Tsar's Imperial Guard! Exactly. <laughs> Yet your husband has such a mastery of bringing to life a character, such a flawless artist. Don't you agree? Yes. 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 <laughs> Oh, you have a great joy in marriage. I find it curious that you are uh, playing your Chopin when you come in. <laughs> curious? How? Don't you like it? Doesn't touch your heart and soul? It is lonely music for lonely people. Well, naturally, when one's husband is away, one gets a bit lonely. What? Oh, what is you? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. One is not two. <laughs> and what about uh, when one's husband is not away? Not? Uh, excuse me? One can get even more lonely in a lonely marriage. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, I see what you mean. Uh, generally speaking. I too am alone. I too am lonely. And I am Russian, which make it more exaggerated and more deep for me. The sadna i So, you can't be with an actress long without trying to seduce her. I am pleased that you are uh, perceptive enough to be aware of it. <laughs> You're not exactly subtle, Prince. I am Russian, Turgenev. Dostoyevsky. And I am Austrian. Schnitzler. Tchaikovsky. Mozart. Tolstoy. Zygmunt Freud. <laughs> ah, Freud is fraud. I don't believe in PC college. <laughs> I believe in love. Marriage is butcher of love. No, 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 wait, 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 no, 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 are you angry? Oh, 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 oh no, no, no. Oh, 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 oh. No, no. Angry, angry. How, how can I be angry with a woman so, so truly devoted to her husband, her marriage? A very fortunate man. Your husband. No, I better go before my emotion make me too reckless. Goodbye, madame. Goodbye, but somehow this feels unfinished. To me, 
It is finished, tragically finished, like Pushkin. Yet, happily finished, like Gogol. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, madame. You are a magnificent woman. Uh, uh, a cigarette? What? Oh, no, no, no. I, I must go. My, my ambassador is waiting for me. But they're not very me. good, rather cheap and harsh. Everyone hates them except my husband. A wonderful aroma. <laughs> really? The ambassador's favorite. <laughs> Goodbye. The ambassador's yes. favorite. You're like a sweet, charming little boy in the body of such a strong, masculine man. I Goodbye. can't help but forgive you. No! Don't! <laughs> I, I offend you, I attack you, I molest you! I am attending the office tonight. You may join me in my private box. I? After my despicable behavior? Despicable? Why well, despicable? I wouldn't say despicable. <laughs> what would you say? Does it matter? I forgive you. Not so much forgiveness. Too bad I didn't do something truly immoral. <laughs> Such as? Such as? <laughs> Tonight, at the opera. <laughs> Flowers, water. <laughs> Be back later. <laughs> Hot! 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 Tonight, second level, left, number 12. Tonight, second level, left, number 12. <laughs> Hot! Hot! <laughs> He's adorable. <laughs>
am sending you home. Why do you have to cry at the opera? Oh, well, Prince, oh. I'm so glad you could for finally join me. We're in the last act, and shall they start the opera over for you again? Oh, 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 uh, are oh, you but... staying or are you leaving? Oh, oh. oh. Uh, Prince Nikolai Stanislavich Samsonov, may I present uh, Mama? Oh. oh. I see true resemblance between you and your mamushka. I must say I resemble my handsome father much more. Oh, did you know her father? <laughs> uh, no, no, I was never back. Uh, I mean, yes. Ah. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I make a good joke. No, very humorous. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh I, my, my corset. Oh, yes, yes. oh, no, I don't want to miss any more opera. I cuckoo about opera. <laughs> <laughs> about opera. I think if a thing is worth saying, why sing it? <laughs> <laughs> ah, this uh, anti-room is quite elegant, quite exquisite, quite... Does that door lock? To the opera box? No, of course not. Why would anyone... Oh, well, it doesn't, and neither does that one. Uh, shall we go in? In there? Well, we can stay here all evening. Oh, why? Very relaxing here. Opera even sound better. <laughs> oh, look. What a comfortable sofa. <laughs> uh, let's stay away from sofas, if you don't mind. Let's learn from our past mistakes. Fine. I don't need sofa. I am soldier. Cossack. I can stand for this. I can't, and I certainly won't. I'm going in. Well, you're really not coming, really? Enjoy yourself, Prince. Please don't make me go inside. I hate opera. <laughs> oh, that little boy again. A charming little boy. That irascible, irrepressible, irresistible little boy. What am I to do with you? Hold me, madame. What? Please, I have no one to hold me. I'll hold you. Oh. Like a mother holds a lost little boy. Oh, everyone needs someone to hold, someone to love. Even you? An actress in particular needs it. I need it like the flower needs the earth, and the earth needs the rain. Yes, yes. Then it would be my pleasure to be that little drizzle that brings your blossom into bloom. <laughs> ah! Oh! Do you have lunatics in your family? Do you have perverts in yours? You invite me, then you insult me, you embrace me, then you abuse me, tempt <laughs> me, and torture me. Uh, let's stop with the silly alliteration. Any woman of character would have done the same, but of course you're Russian, descendant of despots, and look upon all women as your serfs, your property. I am no man's property. Now you stole a horse. <laughs> my attitude, my behavior is not good. You have the intelligence to recognize it. You understand some things cannot be allowed. I thank you for correcting me. Oh, well, uh, yes. You're welcome, I suppose. Life is but a game. No, we all have our little secrets, our little weaknesses. I, I am ready to submit to your scorn, your contempt. My what? I am your devotee, your disciple, to reprimand and punish, mistress. Are you were a disciple. What did you call me? What would you prefer to be called? I've been a bad boy. <laughs> I deserve to be castigated, but not so hard this time. Not on the same cheek, please. You're a prince, but you're an imbecile. In greeting. Yes! Much better approach. Good, good, I like that. No heat, no heat, no slap, no, no violence. There is no reason, no need for violence. Get out. Goodbye. I find your depraved, your bizarre behavior tonight, your revolting confidence, some despicable outcome you imagine from my innocent invitation, offensive. Innocent invitation. Oh, yes, yes. Very innocent. 
Turin. <laughs> Why did you give signal at window? <laughs> You're so pure, innocent. You're right. I'm sorry. This is completely my doing. Everything that has happened is my fault. That is correct. Now we agree. And I didn't invite you here to give you another chance. That's not quite true. I invited you to give myself another chance. Chance? For what? To say what I should have said from the beginning. That I love my husband. That my passion for my dear Max has made me behave like a, a silly schoolgirl. I just wanted to make him jealous. Forgive me. <laughs> uh, why does this simple statement arouse you? Arouse? Oh, no, no. Please, no. It arouses my shame. I laugh for my shame, for my shameful behavior toward you, a wonderful woman, so in love with her husband, so, so devoted, so pure. Pure, so, so please. You don't know me, my past, my faults. Oh, you think it was accident when I saw you at window? You think I don't know already who lived there? I know everything about you. Everything about me? You were born July 14, no? 1800 and... Stop! I'm in public life. This doesn't impress me. Uh, where? Innsbruck, Holy Sands Hospital to Mr. and Mrs. August Felix Beck. You weigh three and a half kilos. Now you weigh... <laughs> All public record. This attempt of yours is laughable. What do I eat for breakfast? You don't eat breakfast. That's how you maintain your enviable figure. And only a light lunch, preferably a small salad with cucumber, radish, tomato, a little to avocado sometime. And, uh, how do you know this? I know what time you go to bed. I know what you sleep in, not very much. <laughs> uh, I know how often. You and your husband. How do you know this? I demand to know how you know this. Being at an embassy has its uh, privileges. I have a dossier on you, madame. How dare you? It's an outrage, a personal invasion, a dossier. On me? But why on me? I, I, I'm not a spy. Why would I inspire a dossier? Because you inspired me. Since one beautiful night I see you in your opera box with binoculars. You saw me in my opera box? I thought you didn't like opera. That is correct. That's why I was looking around with binoculars. <laughs> Which opera was it? Ah, who knows? Loud opera, fat people, stupid costumes, big hearts. <laughs> but I only see you. I only have eyes for you. What was I wearing? Uh, red carnation, white tie with uh, gold studs, ruby stones, uh, matching cufflinks with little... You remember what my husband was wearing? Yes, because I hate him for sitting next to you. I want to take my pistol and shoot him to challenge him to a duel. A prince. This is 1914. This is Vienna. We don't shoot people here. <laughs> oh, never, never. I never put bullet and pistol for decoration only. Your little husband is safe from me. It's common. Max wore that silly carnation, thought it looked Spanish. Oh, I begged him not to wear it. It was a beautiful carnation. A monstrosity. <laughs> you were not the only one looking at us with binoculars. <laughs> So you were there. May God strike me dead if I was not. And I turn to ambassador and I say, who is that woman? And the ambassador say, ah, oh, that is the dazzling actress, Elena Beck. That was the beginning of my love. This is the end. <laughs> This is the end, yes, madame? <laughs> madame? He said dazzling. What? Oh, yes, dazzling. And wonderful and fabulous and magnificent. And, and what did he say about my husband? Nothing. Nothing. Goodbye, madame. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing about my husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You must think I'm dreadful, and I am. I'm awful, terrible. I need a drink. I wasn't laughing, actually. I was
wouldn't say laugh. No. No, no. Ha, ha, ha. I interpret this laughing, but I'm a stranger. <laughs> I'm a foreigner. It was worse. Much worse than laughing, Prince. Have a still this night, oh, no, so no, I no. won't tell you. You Russians do have a claim to fame in the art of alcoholic consumption. It happens to be in the art of musical consumption. Tchaikovsky, Rimsikovsky, Mussorgsky, Mussorgsky. Let's not have another list if you don't mind. Prost. You'll never catch up with me at this rate, Prince. So, you were uh, laughing at your husband, but it was not laughing. Soon you'll be crying, but not crying, walking, but not walking. Perhaps that is drinking, but not drinking. No, please don't rub it in. I'm already mortified. Ah, mortified, but not mortified. <laughs> <laughs> I was gloating. Gloating? Gloating is like... Uh, Are you serious? You, of all people, should understand gloating. I am as unsure of Max now as I was when I first met him, when he was my Petruchio. All his giddy female fans waiting for him at the stage door. Do you know how many years passed before he proposed to me? I endured two insane but mercifully short marriages, and who knows how many idiotic men. Nine! What? <laughs> <laughs> Excluding marriages, but counting engagements, nine. Ten if you count the gentleman with the bad perspiration. Oh, yes, Rudy Bing, poor little man. He used to drip all over his dinner plate. Ten, right? My dossier. They're wonderful things. No one can oh, 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 my spinning or is this wrong spinning? I have received equally good reviews, if not better. I am more popular. I can't understand why he's the one who's always so self-confident, strutting around like some slug rooster, and I'm the timid hen, the insecure one, weak, vulnerable. Oh, I hate me. I disgust me. I need one more drink. A Russian proverb. It say, it say, a rooster may do all the loud crowing, but... <laughs> <laughs> but only the hen can produce the golden eggs. I love that. The stupid rooster can't produce the stupid egg. Yeah. That is so damn... How do you say true in Russian? Pravda, madame? It is so damn pravda. Uh. Wait till I tell him this. It's so wise, so enchantingly wise. You're like an angel sent to open my eyes. <laughs> uh, perhaps I should open them a little more. <laughs> this angel has it on good authority that your rooster is not so confident as you might imagine. He's not? Oh. That's very kind. Thank you, Prince. I know what you're doing. But how could you possibly know? Why, I know nothing. <laughs> but my spies know surprising things. You have a dossier on my husband, too? Chip! I'm not at liberty to say. <laughs> 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 but I happen to know facts about Mark Schumann that even you may not know, psychologically speaking. Psychologically? <laughs> what kind of facts? Did you not tell me that your husband on stage act more intelligent than he is? Now I tell you that in life, he act more confident than he is. A performance, madame. Yet self-doubt haunts him like Hamlet's ghost. The slightest criticism skews him like a sausage. <laughs> he is not the rooster you imagine him to be. My Max, he's just like me. <clears throat> Too much like you, perhaps. 
those years you were waiting for him to propose. Your Marx was simply a coward. You are so different from what I expected. Why hide this other man inside you? You should let him come out of his prison more often. Can you tell me in complete candor, you must have another woman in your life. Who is she? In complete candor. You're asking Prince Nikolai Stanislavich some son. No, I am asking the Emperor of China. Is this so difficult to answer? Prince? Nikolai Stanislavich Samsonov of His Majesty's Imperial Guard, attached to the great embassy in Vienna, Austria, lives like a monk. Has no woman, no desire for woman, no need for any woman, with one unavailable exception. <laughs> Who would believe that? I do, and I'm honored. I'm stirred, but we both know that this is impossible. What if I make it possible? But you can't. I can't love two men. You don't believe in miracles? I have to show me the wonderful, sensitive man I married to. That's a miracle. You opened my eyes. <laughs> Well, perhaps I should open them completely. Oh, oh, no, no, Heinrich. We'll talk tomorrow when I see you. I thought I recognized you. Uh, me? No, no. I, I Your know. Highness, Nikolai Stanislavich Samsonov. <laughs> I am Heinrich Krauss, the critic. Your child is a big fan of mine. Oh, Even your holy priest, Rasputin, is a great admirer of my critiques. Remember me? I, I, I don't... I, oh, wonderful! My best friend in the world and my newest friend in the world. But where did you meet? I know you've never been to the Russian embassy, Heinrich. No, no, it wasn't the embassy. It was, it was, uh, where was it, your highness? Uh, oh, uh, uh, all guardsmen look alike. <laughs> <laughs> How charming. <laughs> and so do all critics. <laughs> I remember now, it was a Russian event given by some celebrated beauty, isn't that right, Prince? Uh oh. Well, your friends are all theater people, Heinrich. Was she? Well, of course, of course, Elena, but nobody you wouldn't know. The Moscow Art Theater here very briefly last year, a private event given by that hostess. Was it Olga Knipper? That's why I wasn't invited. She hates me. Was it Knipper? Oh, you. She has a bald spot. Stop it, darling. You're boring us, and you're making the prince very uncomfortable. Why? Was the prince courting this woman? <laughs> I don't know this man. I have no idea what he's talking about. I am in error. I must be confusing this situation with some other situation, with some other guardsman. <laughs> of course you confuse, Heinrich. The prince is a monk. Monks don't flirt, don't court, and certainly don't lust. They just lie, don't they, Prince? Oh, please, madame, let's not get anxious about this, 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 this. <laughs> you know, Heinrich, he thinks I'm anxious about Olga Knipper with the walrus teeth and the droopy eye. <laughs> Goodbye, Prince. Last time I was just entertained was by the clowns at the carnival in Stuttgart. Oh. 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 I couldn't hear anything out in the hall. <laughs> the ushers were looking at me strangely. I had to come in. Sorry. Oh. Well, she doesn't like you, my friend. <laughs> oh, but she loves her husband. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Mission accomplished. Oh. I never should have doubted you. What now? Now? Now the guardsman vanishes, never to be heard of again. And yet, I don't know, I feel... Uh, <laughs> A sadness. A sadness? What for? You just won your wife. I'm not sure. For the guardsman, I imagine. For the guardsman? What do you mean? You are the guardsman. Me? Oh, yes, Heinrich, I created him. But am I also the creation? Can Michelangelo be his David? This is taking a turn. 
my friend, that is <laughs> it's not entirely healthy. I mean, I mean, you should, uh, this is bordering on severe. You know men have died for me. One committed suicide by poison. A lieutenant fought a duel over me and was severely wounded in his clavicle. I think I'll go hear the last notes of La Traviata. Oh, there are boys in here. <laughs> <laughs> no man has ever made me feel so provoked, so irritated, so inflamed. Once you ignite me, I burn with a scorching flame. You should have been ready for that when you provided the spark. Should we call the fire brigade, or should we put out this inferno ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't be afraid for me, little prince. There will be no divorce, no scandal, and I don't want to be a princess. I want something else. What a husband doesn't know won't hurt him. He comes back in two days. We only have tomorrow. Oh. The timid Cossack with the big sword and little courage. Royal blood is very thin, isn't it? Five o'clock. Tomorrow. Tomorrow.
She has a headache. <laughs> So I thought I'd return to surprise and delight my wife. Are you delighted? We are all delighted, sir. Berta! <laughs> well, well, well. You really outdid yourself. No, I always dress for dinner. Yes, but not overdress. Mm. Did you like the opera? What? Oh, last night. I've heard it so many times. Did uh, Heinrich drop by our opera box as usual? As usual. And you two were alone most of the evening? No. No? Mama was there. At the opera? Ha, <laughs> how nice. Like old times for you two. No one else? Yes. Yes? 900 other people were there. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a good mood. I meant in our opera box. No, no one else in our opera box. So it was um, only Mama and Heinrich with you at the opera, and only Mama and Heinrich with you here in the afternoon? Oh, how strange you are. Heinrich was here, but he left, and of course, Berta. That's it. No one else was here or in our box. Just wondering, because the doorman said something. Fritz? What did he say? Uh, something about a, a soldier stopping by here. Here? A soldier? Well, it was probably one of Berta's boyfriends. A high-ranking officer in a Russian army calling on a maid? I had no idea how snobbish you were, Max. Why don't we ask her? Oh, don't. A maid always knows the right thing to say to protect her mistress. To protect me? Oh, I see. This little chit-chat has suddenly become a cross-examination. I am getting Mama and Berta right now. Please don't. Mama will tell the same lies as Berta, and Berta will do the same as Mama, and then we'll have three women competing with each other for who's the best liar. I am not saying another word unless you admit that these aren't innocent questions, that you are conducting a full-blown inquisition. I admit it. Then the witness, or should I say the accused, is ready. <laughs> It's been determined that Dr. Heinrich Krauss called on you at the opera. Did you introduce him to anyone that evening? He already knows, Mama. There was no one else to introduce. What if Dr. Heinrich Krauss were to come in right now through that door? <laughs> Cheap melodrama, Max. Heinrich would look at me and without a blink of an eye he would say there was no one there except Mama. What if I ask him when he can't look at you? Well, then he would have already looked at me that morning, and to save you further fuss, he looked at me 15 years ago, and ever since, Heinrich has always known exactly what to say. This must be a joke. Please say it is, Max. You don't actually think I entertained a Russian guardsman here in our home? I don't think. I know. I have definite knowledge. Knowledge? A, a doorman or some... Gossip or, oh, but you paid someone to spy on me. I didn't have to pay. Oh, too cheap to pay him, just like you. Oh, spying on your wife in exchange for a couple of complimentary theater tickets. Mama, Berta, oh, <laughs> pack my things. I have to get away from here. I'll pack some things for yourselves if you're coming with me. Of course I'm coming with you. I wouldn't stay here with this F dog. I like it here. Oh, let her stay with her decaying matinee. I'll pack my trunk, take one suitcase for yourself. We'll go back to the rest of You can't, you can't go. I need you, I adore you. You can't. I love you beyond endurance. Move, I'm leaving him. Irena! I'll jump off the parliament building if you leave me. He's acting. I can tell. He means it, I can tell. I mean it. The watchman would never let you up there. Well, then the Rat House building, or the Schoenbrunn Palace, or I'll shoot myself. <gasps> he doesn't have a gun. You don't have a gun, Max. He has the gun you used in Hedda Goobler, Max. <laughs> That's right. Huh. Thank you, Berta. And I won't be using blanks. You do all this for me. I would do anything and everything for you. Do you really want a whore for a wife? A whore? Well, you just called me one, you must believe it. Oh, uh, now look, I, I mean, I, I was trying, I, I wanted, I, I, don't, I don't know how I can, uh, What? Uh, how you can what? 
How you wanted what? Last chance, Max. Who do you believe? The doorman or me? The gossip or me? The lies or me? Anybody else or me? You! How do I know you're not just saying this because you know I'll leave you? I swear on my life! That's not good enough. Not good enough! <laughs> my life! <laughs> swear on your acting career. Same for me. Oh, uh, I have to unpack my bags, hang my costumes before they wrinkle. Do you mind, Angel? No, my darling, but please hurry. I have to do my dialogue out loud. Uh, I am so upset that my performance at Schlott got scuttled because of Kenneth. I'm sure he's fake. He's probably no sicker than I am. You know, he gets. 30,000 a year now, and he's got no marquee 30, and he's always broke. Everything he has is mortgaged, always at the racetrack. I hear his book, he just bought another house. It's twice as big as the first one. No wonder he can't get by on 30,000 a year. He ought to do pretty well, he's not married anymore. <laughs> when did Zelda and the children leave him? Oh, the day he pawned her, made to bed in that Stupid racing derby. That long shot came in by three lengths. I wish I had a little bit on him. Don't you even dare think about it. Max? Max? What, what? I'm getting ready to go out, darling. I mean it. No gambling, do you hear? Of course. You think I was serious? <laughs> How much money does a single man need a year, anyway? What, a bachelor apartment, 15,000? At least 20. Not 20, I'll give you 18,500. Oh. Then there's, uh, what, heating, cleaning, uh, lighting, etc. Oh, I'll be generous, 1,500. 2,000? That's a very extravagant estimate. Now let's give him uh, some miscellaneous expenses. Um, oh, you know, cigars, tips. Etc. Etc. Four hundred. Eight. Eight. <laughs> oh, no wonder we never have any money left. I'll give him five. That makes twenty-nine thousand. He still has a thousand left over. I don't call that poverty. Max, I need to be by myself to study to do my dialogue out loud. Max. Max, where are you? Max? Max? Mm -hmm. 
Precisely five o'clock, madame. Tsar Nikolai could not have been more punctual. Bravo. Bravo. I was wondering how you were going to finish this performance. Bravo, oh, my no. darling. Bravo. Oh, no, no, no. I see what you're doing. No, 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 no. You can't wriggle out of my trap by pretending you're not caught. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Oh, I see. You can play a part perfectly to deceive me, but I can't play an even easier part to deceive you, even though my talent is... Is what? Your talent is what? Equal to mine? I don't throw away my bad reviews because I don't get any. <laughs> ah! If you can play your guardsman so well that I believe in him, why wouldn't I be able to play the wife who believed in the guardsman for you to believe I believed in him? <laughs> Mama didn't recognize me. Bertha didn't recognize me. Fritz didn't recognize me. I recognized you the first time I saw you, Max. <laughs> Not from that window. How's that possible? Oh, your eyes, Max. They're the first thing I fell in love with, remember? Your magnificent eyes dazzle from the highest balcony in any theater. That's why you're so popular. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Still, why didn't you expose me right away? Oh, this is the greatest gift you could have given me to, to become this guardsman. I was so entranced by what you were doing for my sake that, that I simply had to equal your performance for your sake. Oh, we made love to each other, Max, in the most personal way that two actors ever could. <laughs> I wanted to play our romance after the end, and I'm so glad we did. Oh, you believe me, don't you? Um, and there's no way we can ever resolve this. Excuse me, I didn't realize you were entertaining Robert that. Heinrich, Lena, no. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Heinrich knows. Yes, I know he knows. I told him. I told him, too, last night that I recognized you huh? after the opera. Now why does he look so astonished? <laughs> I'm astonished that she told you. And then it cannot keep a confidence from me forever. She spilled the beans, and all the beans fell out. <laughs> All the beans fell out. What? Well, you can resolve everything, Heinrich. You're my star witness. Is she telling the truth? I can set your mind at ease, Max. Elena did recognize you. Good, 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 good. Now, here's the crucial part. When? Why are you looking at her? I'm asking the questions. Oh, she's um, playing Clarence Darrow, dear. Ah, uh, oh, actress brain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the question? Pay attention. At what moment precisely did she recognize me? You're doing it again. Stop looking at her. Hi, Max, you know exactly when she recognized you. We, we both do. I want to compare notes. He's my troubled brain. No, tell him, Heinrich. Let, let's finish this game. Let the chips fall where they may. Tell me, Heinrich! Oh. Right, my friend. But to whom am I telling this? <laughs> to who? To me? Yes, you sound simple, but wish you. You the actor, or you the husband? I mean, you both have a keen interest in this guardsman fellow. A very different interest, I think. One of you will be disappointed, even crushed. Ibsen said, you rob a man of his illusion, and you rob him of his happiness. So which story will I tell? The story of a wife's betrayal? Or of, of a great actor's failure in the role of his lifetime? Which do you want to hear? <laughs> All right. All right, Max. Shall I have a Bible on which to place my hand, counselor? Because here's the truth. The whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Here's what you want to hear. 
Helena, your wife, stop. <laughs> I don't need to hear what you know or you <clears throat> don't know, Heinrich. I know already. I've been duped, tricked, cheated, deceived, lied to, and then, and, then, and, and, uh, and outsmarted. Mm. Look at her. Look at her, Heinrich. Yes, Max, I can see her. You're a theater critic, I ask you. Have you ever seen a better performance, a more dazzling actress? Dazzling? That's the sweetest thing I ever heard. You played your part so convincingly that even your leading man believed your infidelity was real. Now that's acting, Heinrich. Yes, Max, yes it is. Even you would have to give her a rave. Who else could hold her own opposite Max Schumann? No one could. No one but Elena. <laughs> and you reserved me front row center for your entire performance. I'll never doubt you again, my angel. And I'll never give you reason to doubt me again, my love. Well, I'll drink to that. But then I'll drink to anything. These just came for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.